to launch this program and at that time or at that time they asked the item the captain captain and one particular number of the is the one the first thing I said that the department is presenting the same to the Ministry of Health and Human Services to the Ministry of Health and Human May I request that after that photo, you may leave this. The Ministry of Health, in the last one year, has rolled out activities aligned to the National Cancer Control Strategy 2017 to 2022, which prioritizes building of robust infrastructure, scaling up of screening, and support of the new HBV vaccine rollout. National and county governments have also enhanced county chemotherapy centers. Radiotherapy facilities now exist in Mombasa, Nakuru, Garissa, Kisi, and the newly established Kenyatta University teaching research and referral hospital. All these efforts improve service delivery for cervical cancer screening, prevention and treatment. Last week, we conducted the fifth edition of the Beyond Zero Medical Safari in Nairobi City County, where we performed free screening, treatment and advocacy on the importance of women and girls taking steps to lower the risk of this disease. Our work continues to support community education programs, which are key strategies to ensure nationwide prevention and control of cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, your presence here today, therefore, is a culmination of months activities. It is also in recognition of all of you as champions. All of you have added your voice to amplify and support Kenya's efforts in, in the rallying call for the elimination of cervical cancer by 2030. It is my hope that this meeting has identified bottlenecks and has come up with effective and sustainable solutions to support decentralized services for cervical cancer prevention, treatment, and management. Today, we're also launching the Cervical Cancer Advocacy Guide, which has been developed to empower and sensitize communities on cervical cancer prevention. The world designated January as Cervical Health Awareness Month. It's the month where issues related to cervical cancer, HPV, the importance of screening, early detection and treatment are highlighted. It's a time when we reflect on how we need to consider issues of affordability of both screening and treatment, especially in low-income communities where limited resources and infrastructure constrain access. Africa's capacity to detect, diagnose, and treat all forms of cancer has been challenged. Health systems have remained heavily focused on competing priorities of infectious diseases, including HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. Research has indicated that the current trends in new cancer cases and related deaths has identified risks that affect women more than any other. Our focus today is therefore appropriate to urge partners to work together and identify effective ways to increase voluntary participation in cervical cancer prevention programs. This event brings much hope because we have heard stories of untold suffering, emotional trauma, and increased financial burden of women and their families. It brings hope because this disease is preventable if detected early. 
research and evidence have demonstrated that effective screening programs and immunization reduce cervical cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya is currently ranked in the top 20 countries with the highest rates of cervical cancer, has joined the global call for elimination of cervical cancer by 2030. The government has called on coordinated multi-sectoral efforts to implement the 90-70-90 targets to achieve a reduction in mortality from cervical cancer. The aim is to have 90% of girls fully vaccinated with the HPV vaccine, 70% of eligible women screened, and 90% of women identified with pre-cancer or cancer treated appropriately. Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer among women in Kenya. And every day, at least nine women die from cervical cancer in our country. Yet, it is a preventable disease through awareness, vaccination, screening, and treatment. The Ministry of Health, with the support of partners, is implementing a roadmap for universal health coverage which has prioritized cancer prevention, screening, and early treatment, including cervical cancer. Today, as we wrap up the events of the National Cervical Cancer Health Awareness Month, as well as the intensified awareness and screening activities conducted last week across the country during the National Cervical Cancer Awareness Week, we take the opportunity to assess the progress made and set new targets, even as we commit to making screening work in our communities. Your Excellency, as you may be aware, Kenya is one of the few African countries to have introduced the human papilloma virus vaccine into our routine immunization schedule and offered for free. The vaccine targets girls who are currently 10 years old and subsequently all girls as they acquire this age in the future. In my last check on how far we have gone since we launched this program in October, late October last year, we have vaccinated 350,000 schoolgirls of this age against a target of 800,000. So I would like to say that we are very much on track. <laughs> this is expected to complement existing strategies for cancer control, including screening and early treatment to save thousands of lives in future and alleviate the suffering associated with cancer. Your Excellency, I note with concern, however, that our cervical cancer screening coverage has remained low. At only 16.4% of all our eligible women. Challenges such as stigma, misconceptions about cervical cancer screening, lack of adequate staffing and capacity for screening, inadequate commodities and supplies for screening continue to hamper efforts in scaling up screening for cervical cancer. Our vision at the Ministry, Your Excellency, is that no woman or child should be left behind. We endeavor to ensure that every eligible child is immunized and gets an opportunity to survive and thrive, and that every eligible woman is screened regularly as per our national cancer screening guidelines of 2018. I call upon all women to present themselves for screening at their nearest health facilities, as this can save life by detecting the disease early when curative treatment is possible. I'm glad for today because the day has come. 
I told myself, I won't let my daughter to go through what I went through. Survive, treating cancer, it is not easy. Being a young lady, being, getting already on menopause at early age, it is not easy for me. Thank you because I did what I was praying for. Thank you for the government, Minister of Health, and for our president for the four big for the big four agendas and health being the number one. I wanted to protect my, my daughter and I'm glad my daughter was the first one to be vaccinated in Kenya. Thank you.